Hi everyone, John here from All Miniatures Great and Small, and today we're going to be doing an overview and look at the new Bagration uh, book for Flames of War. These are Soviet forces on the Eastern Front in 1944. So this book uh, represents the Soviets' great push back. Um, the Germans had been slowly eating their way uh, into the Soviet Union, and the Soviets had stopped them, and this is their great pushback that ultimately saw the Germans all the way back to Germany. Uh, so it's a really interesting time, and as a Soviet player, it's an exciting time because Soviet players are starting to get some really cool equipment. All right, let's talk about the contents. Um, so here is the contents of the uh, book itself. Now, I'm not going to do a page-by-page -page turn, but we are going to look at some specific things and talk about the book overall. Um, but first we're going to talk about what formations you're going to get in this book. So we have the uh, IS-2 Guards Heavy Tank Regiment, the IS-85 Heavy Tank Regiment, Heavy Self-Propelled Artillery Regiment, Medium Self-Propelled Artillery Regiment, Light Self-Propelled Artillery Regiment, and an Engineer Sapper Battalion. So that covers the uh, the Guard Heavy Tank Regiments. Then the 8th Guards Rifle Corps and 30th Rifle Corps, 30th Rifle Corps, you get the Hero Shock Rifle Battalion and Regular Rifle Battalion. Then in the Special Assault Group Capture of Minsk, you get a Hero T-34-85 Tank Battalion, Hero T-34 Tank Battalion, Hero Motor Rifle Battalion, T-34-85 Tank Battalion, T-34 Tank Battalion, Motor Rifle Battalion, Reconnaissance Company. And then we get into the support units, which we will talk about um, in a little bit. So those are the formations you get. And you can tell there are quite a lot of formations. Um, and we're introducing some cool, iconic Russian vehicles like the IS-2 the T-34-85. Um, I always liked that tank. I thought it was cool. So those are the lists. So let's go ahead and start talking about those next. Next, let's talk about the Soviet special rules. What do we get in here? We have Flamethrower, um, which is pretty cool. Uh, a lot of the infantry units can take flamethrowers, and they do have flamethrowing tanks uh, in a couple of flavors, which is nice. All right, uh, you have the, uh, under the tanks, special rules, you have crafty. Crafty tanks have better tactics ratings. Flammable tanks have worse motivation and assault ratings. Heavy tanks have a better counter tank, uh, counter attack rating. Not one step back units with not one step back have a better last stand rating. Uh, for infantry, you have for the motherland, uh, Soviet infantry fight bitterly in hand-to-hand -hand combat. Uh, they have a better assault rating. Commissar teams. Um, if you have a commissar team, uh, the unit has better motivation. Redemption. This is for a penal company. Uh, unit transport. Hurrah. Uh, units may move 6 inches instead of 4 inches when charging into contact. Now, this is kind of a... Uh, 2 inches doesn't sound like much, but this is kind of a big deal um, with assaults and Soviets um, that they get to move six inches when charging into contact. Very helpful when you have a large 15 man or 22 man or stand. So now let's go look at and talk about some of these formations. We're just going to try to hit these first. Um, let's go down to Soviet force. The Soviet force, so here are all those formations we talked about and the support units they get. What's interesting as far as the support units, and we'll talk about what those support units do a little bit later, but the numbers that you can take. You can really take a lot of artillery. Uh, you can take two batteries of uh, like traditional artillery as well as uh, two batteries of Katyushka if you want, um, which is very powerful. Okay, So the IS-2 uh, guards Heavy Tank Regiment. Let's talk about that. 
The IS-2 Guards Heavy Tank Regiment is the primary way you're going to get IS-2s on the, the battlefield. Um, you can take one of these um, black core platoons, or companies in this case, and add it to almost any other formation, but this is where you, you can uh, add a lot of these cool, iconic tanks. Alright, so um, you have the HQ and at least one company of IS-2s mandatory. The second mandatory company or platoon is uh, either IS-2 or IS-85. And then you can add up to two additional IS-2 platoons. And then it also has a built-in infantry component, uh, either SMG, Hero SMG, or Engineer Sapper. So that's uh, cool because you want to have something other than your, your primary tanks in your formation. It just keeps your formation from breaking that much sooner. Um, I realize that this kind of infantry, which, in, which is an SMG or a sapper company, is going to be in your face rather than hiding back behind uh, uh, trees like um, a German AA platoon that's that's uh, anchoring your, your formation. But it's good that you can get it in your formation and you don't have to place it as a support unit and it can help keep that uh, that formation on the table a little bit longer. Alright, so the Guards Heavy Tank Regiment HQ unit, you get one uh, IS-2 for seven points. Um, we're going to do, obviously, a, a unit overview of the IS-2 at some point. But just to talk about uh, it a little bit, the IS-2 is kind of a beast. It's got a front armor of 10, side armor of 8, top armor of 2. Very similar to a Tiger in that regard. It does have a big gun, uh, just one shot of anti-tank 14. Now, in the... Um, the tank company, so these are your platoons for other nations, your tank company you can take up to three to five IS-2s. So the bare bones, uh, just three in the company, is 22 points. So theoretically you could take uh, an HQ, three, three uh, tank platoons of, of IS-2s or companies of IS-2s, and then a little bit left over for infantry or, or uh, artillery. So next we'll talk about the IS-85 Guards Regiment, which is exactly the same thing, except all you can take is the IS-85. Um, what is the IS-85? It's basically a IS-2 with a different turret, with like the turret from a um, the, the gun similar to what you find on a T-34-85. So it's an 85 millimeter um, anti-tank 12 3 plus firepower, but it's gets, it gets two shots. So um, that's that's good. So I like kind of the um, the theme here with the Soviet tanks, and we'll see this uh, repeating. Is you get one version that's very high anti-tank rating, and it's only a single shot. It might be slow firing, or you can get uh, rate of fire two tank, which is AT12 or or worse. But you know you're getting more shots, um, so that you have more maneuverability. So, for example, if you're fighting Americans, where you, the top armor they might have is, uh, sorry, the, the best front armor they might have is six or seven. 85 millimeter guns probably going to be fine um, for you. All right, so the IS-85 uh, though companies, otherwise it's identical to the IS-2. All right. Then we have the heavy SP artillery regiment. So this one's interesting. It has an HQ, which is a um, IS-2, and then it lets you take either um, an ISU-122 or ISU-152s as your core platoons. So your, two of them are required, you can take up to four of them, and then again you can tack on an SMG uh, company or sapper company to these guys as well. So um, build-wise they're kind of identical, um, just a different primary tank. The other difference is obviously your HQ unit is an IS-2, whereas your um, self-propelled artillery is the uh, rather heavy-hitting ISU-122 or 155 or 152. Sorry. Uh, so the these are are interesting. They're not as well armored. The 122 is not as well armored. It's an IS-2, a little bit worse front armor. Uh, but it's it's intended for other things. It's got uh, a great uh, 
gun that can knock out infantry out of buildings. Um, it, it's really, you know, it's a self-propelled artillery gun that's that's meant for blasting bunkers and things like that. So it's a really heavy hitter, um, but again, it's it's uh, only one shot in direct fire. The 152 is uh, can be fired as artillery. Well, I guess both of them could be fired as artillery, which is nice. So you've got um, a lot of power there as well. I like the uh, ISUs because they are um, multi-purpose. They are big, giant, beastly tanks, but they um, they really bring a lot to the table. You've got artillery, you've got direct fire, um, and then it actually does have a machine gun, which is, is nice. Okay. Um, the medium self-propelled artillery regiment. This is the uh, either SU-85 or SU-100. These are kind of like the medium-sized um, tanks. I like these. This is the first uh, formation I'm building. And it's built, uh, again, kind of the same way. You have an HQ, two mandatory, either SU-85s or SU-100s. And uh, you can take up to four. Two of them are required. Um, the difference with the infantry component in this one is you don't get sappers. Uh, the only option are your SMGs. All right, then um, your HQ is a T-34-85 and your primary um, platoons or companies in this case are three to five units and they either are rocking an 85 millimeter gun or a 100 millimeter gun. There are two flavors of the SU-85. There's a uh, cheaper version with front armor 5 and a more expensive version with front armor 7. Um, What's interesting and kind of cool about this one is that the medium self-propelled artillery regiment is hit on a careful rating of 4+. Um, it's one of the few that has that higher rating, um, which is pretty cool. Um, and it, it explains these guys are kind of veterans and they get cool new upgraded tanks. Um, and again, we see that kind of split if you want um, more shots at a lower anti-tank rating of 12 or a higher shot here's your SU-100 um, one shot at anti-tank 15 um, so it depends and maybe a, a mix and I think that's what I'm doing in my my company is going to be a good way to do the the uh, SU-100s keep things like Panthers and Tigers honest and then the SU-85 uh, with the 85 millimeter keeps medium tanks at bay. Then you go into the light SP artillery uh, regiment, which is basically just the SU-76. Same um, breakdown as the medium SP artillery. Um, you just get the SMGs as options in this particular formation. No sappers. Um, the SU-76 is an interesting tank. It's got uh, it's only got an anti-tank rating of nine, so I'm not sure how competitive it is um, on the kind of the late war battlefield. But it does give you an artillery uh, blast, um, self-propelled artillery, um, which is is pretty decent. It uses a T70 as a, its HQ unit as well. Uh, the nice thing about this is you can field a ton of these guys. I think like five of them is thir uh, 13 points. So you could max out your company. Um, What's that, like 52 points plus the HQ? So 53 points. So almost half your points to max out on vehicles in that company, which is, is interesting. And I'm sure Battlefront would love that because it means you bought a ton of boxes. All right, next up we have the Engineer Sapper Battalion. So this is, um, you have the HQ, you have two mandatory sapper companies, a third sapper company is optional, as well as an armor component, which is either IS-2s, ISU-122s or 152s, and uh, OT-34s, which are T-34 flame tanks. Uh, they have... 
their HQ, which is a uh, SMG team, then their Sapper company. This is the first time we're looking at the Soviet companies. You can take uh, 20 stands with smoke pots for 27 points. That's a lot of points. That's a lot of stands of infantry. They are only they're they're hit on a three plus. They're aggressive, uh, but that's a lot of stands to remove. Twenty stands, you still get a three up save. So it's um, you know they can be pretty durable. They have uh, machine guns. They have uh, Panzerfausts that they stole from the Germans, and then you can add different units to this uh, this company to, to make it more powerful. You can add anti-tank rifle teams, heavy machine gun teams, flamethrower teams, and mortar teams, which is cool. Next, the Hero Shock Rifle Battalion. Um, this one really has uh, a lot of, of options in its uh, formation. In addition to the uh, HQ and the two mandatory um, companies in this case, one has to be a shock rifle company. The other is either a shock rifle company or a storm group. Um, you ha can take another one of those if you want. Then you can add uh, companies of machine guns, mortars, scout platoons, 45 millimeter anti-tank guns, uh, two of those. So you can build up quite a lot of units in your core formation and really stick around, play the, uh, you know, the durability game. The Hero Shock Rifle Battalion is it's still hit on a 3+, plus, but its skill is a 3+, plus, um, which is very important when you are um, assaulting. You can add an anti-tank rifle team, heavy machine gun teams, and flamethrower teams. The Storm Group is um, actually a little bit better in that it is careful, so it's hit on a 4+. Plus. Um, it's a little bit smaller, but it is um, kind of an interesting group. So it's it's um, you know it's a special purpose unit, if you will. Okay. Then we're moving on to the rifle battalion, which is pretty similar. You've got uh, rifle companies. You can take a penal company as one of your uh, two mandatory um, companies, and then you've got the same type of support. Um, well, I think there's a little bit different SMGs, scout platoons, 120 millimeter mortars. The rifle company can um, take 22 teams base. They're hit on a three. And again, you can add machine guns and flamethrowers and all that good stuff to them. The reason to take these guys is they're uh, more, uh, they're, they're less expensive than the, the heroes, obviously. So you can get like 22 teams for 18 points, which is pretty nice. Penal Company, uh, these guys, uh, they are fearless. They assault, uh, they, they hit people in a 3 plus in assault. So they're um, interesting. But what's also interesting about these guys is they are, they save on a 4 plus. All of these guys save on a 4 plus in the rifle battalion. Uh, the scout platoon doesn't, but that's uh, yeah, a very tiny platoon. All right, so um, moving on, we have just a couple more. We've got the T-34 85mm Hero Tank Battalion. So uh, we have an HQ and two mandatory tank companies. You can take a third, and then you've got AA. You can take an SMG company, mortars, and some anti-tank guns. So that's quite a bit you can take in your core formation, which is nice. This is a 85mm uh, exclusive version of the company. So you're just taking the T-34-85, which is a very nice tank. Uh, armored similar to his Sherman, um, with a gun similar to a Sherman 76. Uh, so it's very, very cool. Then you've got the Hero T-34 Tank Battalion which is just like the T-34-85 tank battalion. This could get a little confusing. But it gives you some ability to mix and match. So it, it will be a little bit cheaper because you're not taking pure T-34-85s. Um, the best you can do is split your... You know, you could take a, a company of 
two T34s and two T3485s or four and three. So um, there are different ways to split up your tanks in that platoon, make it a little bit cheater, uh, cheater, make it a little bit cheaper and give those T3485s kind of a less expensive meat shield to take the first few hits uh, before you start losing the better guns. All right, then you've got, um, sorry, I'll also clarify with that T-34 uh, hero, T-34 tank battalion, you can take a T-70 and a Valentine tank company as one of the two mandatory platoons. So if you have a box of those Valentines, um, which is pretty interesting, or uh, T-70s, you can take up to three of those. Uh, you can flesh that out and make that formation a little bit uh, uh, more diverse. All right, then you've got the Hero Motor Rifle Battalion, um, which gives you a lot of the same exact options that the Rifle Battalion had, uh, but you can get some built-in armored support um, and recon, which is cool. The difference here is the Motor Rifle Company has uh, 10 machine gun teams max. They're hit on a three. They have the For the Motherland Assault of two plus though. So that's really uh, nice. So if these guys get into assault, that's um, that's pretty scary. All right, then um, you have the T-34-85 Tank Battalion. So this is just the regular non-hero version, if you will. You can only take two companies, two mandatory companies, but you've got to take both of them. Um, then you've got AA, mortars, anti-tank guns, and infantry as options in that company as well. Um, the main thing with these are they're cheaper, but um, they're still hit on a 3+, plus, but their skill rating is 5+. Plus. So they, um, you know, they're not going to be doing great in assault. And... Um, you, know, you pay less for them for that, that option. Um, the T-34 tank battalions the same exact way, except, again, you can take T-70s or Valentines in that second um, compulsory company um, in addition to the T-34s. Um, but it's nice. I mean, you can take 10 of the vanilla T-34s for 30 points. So that means, theoretically, you could take 31 T-34s for 90, like 93 points, and still have enough for recon. So that could be uh, that could be an interesting list. Um, okay, then you have the motor rifle battalion, so non-hero version, uh, kitted out kind of the same way. Uh, these guys, again, you can. I like the motor rifle company, you can take like 28 stands of infantry, which is just insane. But it's 30, 37 points, so that's a lot. Uh, but it's it's pretty cool. They are they do hit on 3 plus in assault, so even though they are um, trained in some ways, their assault is better. Add that with the 6 inch uh, move into contact instead of 4 in the assault, and that can be deadly. Then you have the Reconnaissance Company, which is um, interesting. They use the M3 Scout car uh, for that. And um, basically it is armored reconnaissance, can be supported by armor, mortars, uh, recon, stuff like that. Um, not very expensive. So you could take, um, uh, you know, you could build a very small company or take, sorry, in this case it's a, it's a uh, reconnaissance company. Yeah, this one's built like Western Allies with platoons and whatnot. Um, but you can build such a small company that you might be able to add it to another battalion. Alright, let's uh, talk briefly about support units. There's some cool stuff here. We're not going to go through every single one, but I will point out some of the ones that uh, I find interesting. We do have a couple of versions of the flame tank. You've got the uh, T-34 version of the flame tank and you've got the KV-8 version of the flame tank, uh, which basically just gives it uh, KV-8 has better armor at the cost of speed. Um, 
these are kind of cool because you could take five flame tanks, T-34 flame tanks, for 13 points, which, if you are fighting an infantry-based opponent, that can be quite terrifying. Flamethrowers aren't quite as scary to tanks anymore like they were in version 3, which is good. Um, you got a lot of uh, Soviet artillery. We'll mention the Katyushkas. Those guys are cool. They do have the Salvo uh, template, which is nice for their rocket launchers. Lots of, lots of Soviet artillery. Um, you do have the Sturmovik IL-2 which I'll be adding to my list. So you have a couple versions of that one. One with uh, 37 millimeter cannons. Alright, so um, that's Bagration as far as the units. The rest of the book is pretty cool. They do have um, information about city fighting in the back. Uh, I guess this is to go with the new kits they're releasing, terrain kit. Um, I don't know if it's more than one or not, but it looks cool uh, with a plastic city ruins so it looks like you can build lots of cool stuff um, it does have like a uh, a series of campaigns or the battles and a linked campaign um, crossing the river that's the big thing with the Soviets uh, bridges and fording so most of these are along those lines you have to get across the uh, a river or something like along those lines. Uh, they looks like they are going to sell a river assault terrain pack. So that is interesting as well. All right, so there you go. That is a quick look at the Bagration book. Um, what do I think about it? I like it. I'm not a Soviet player by tradition, but I do like the Soviet equipment. I think it looks cool. The IS-2s, the uh, the gigantic ISU-152. Uh, I really like the look of the SU-100 and the SU-85. I think they're cool-looking tanks. Um, I really like the T-34-85. Um, I, th I think that turret on that chassis just looks awesome and powerful. The regular T-34, you know, eh. But I love that uh, T-34-85 turret. Um, plus, it's very similar to a Sherman 76, which I love. So, uh, game-wise, you know, that's a, a win for me as well. Um, so there's all kinds of cool stuff. There's such, uh, there's such iconic Soviet equipment in this book. The Katyushas, the IL-2s. Um, if you followed my, my build, I've been adding uh, actually both of those to my, my first list, so it'll be interesting to see. But um, I like it. I, th I think it's a great uh, book. Um, at some point, we'll take a look at the cards and see what the cards add to this, because I do know it adds a, a few cool things, like um, uh, a captured German reconnaissance <laughs> company. Uh, so you could have, like, uh, a, a tiger as your reconnaissance unit to get your spearhead um, and actually use it in, in game. So that's cool. So we'll look at the cards and, and look at some of the cool stuff that that adds in a separate video. But there you go, guys. Um, I hope you enjoyed this. I will mention, too, that um, if you do like our Flames of War content, please do check out our Patreon. We are offering a uh, battle report once a month that's uh, Patreon exclusive. So obviously, um, well, it depends on when you listen to this, but you know this month is going to be uh, Bagration focused, obviously. Um, so check it out. We'll put the link in the video description below. Also, please check us out on Facebook at All Miniatures Great and Small. Uh, we appreciate you following us there. Uh, there you can see what we're up to. Uh, you know, engage with us in chat. It's always cool. Really would appreciate a like and subscribe here on uh, YouTube. And click that bell to receive a notification when we uh, post new content. As always, though, thanks for watching, and keep on wargaming.